A common theme that you've seen in these Soho videos is that small offices and home offices have very unique networking and computing requirements. And of course, you don't have the same requirements you might have at a corporate office, and the same thing applies for the environment you might be in. In a corporate office, you might have a raised floor facility where all of your servers might be sitting. There is a cooling system within that facility. You might be monitoring it. You might be alerted if you have problems with humidity problems with temperature. Obviously, you don't have that in a small office or a home office. So you have to think differently when it comes to these environmental concerns. You have to think about how you're going to support these devices you might have at that remote site, how you might monitor them, and also think about the longevity of these pieces of equipment that you're putting at these remote sites. You don't want to be in an environment where everything is being put into a closet. There's no air conditioning. Air, all of your equipment gets very hot, and they tend to fail. In a small office or a home office, you've got limited support. So you want to be sure that the equipment that you're installing for your computers and for your network infrastructure is going to be there and it's going to work for very long periods of time. And so obviously, the environment that you're putting all of this equipment in becomes very important. An environmental concern that seems to be relatively obvious is temperature. You've got these networking devices. You've got switches and routers and other devices that get very warm when they're operating. And because of that, they need to be in a part of the environment that allows them to cool down. I've been in small offices before where everything was put into a closet. It was put away from everyone else. And you open the door of the closet, and an amazing amount of hot air suddenly pours out of the closet. Obviously, when your equipment is not able to be cooled properly, then it's not going to have the longevity that you need, and in some cases may fail during the day when people are trying to do work. So temperature, obviously, something to consider. Humidity is another big environmental concern. You want to be sure that the equipment that you're using is going to be in a very cool and very dry place. Your electronic equipment does not work very well when there's a lot of water involved. And in very, very humid locations, if you're on an island, if you're in a very tropical environment at your remote site, there might be a need to really make sure this equipment stays as dry and cool as possible. So when you're setting up your remote office, make sure that your equipment is able to be accessed by the air conditioner that's in the room. You don't have a raised floor. You don't have a central cooling system. But there may be a place to put it within that room or within that building to make sure that it is under a very perfect temperature and perfect humidity. In a small office or home office, you also don't have a building-wide UPS. An uninterruptible power supply will make sure that if there is any power flickers or any power outages, that your servers and your network equipment will continue to work normally. So generally, you'd have to buy a small UPS, something that is self-contained that you can plug into the wall yourself, and maybe have multiples of those. It's not unusual in small offices or home offices to have a separate UPS at everyone's desk. That way, you can be sure if there's any problems with power that all of those systems will continue to run. If you're working out of your house, or even if your Soho happens to be in a building with other people, you always have to think about the wireless networks that are around you. And if you're setting up a wireless network in your facility, you may not have control on what people are doing in the next apartment over or in the next building over. So as you're setting up your wireless, you may want to think about how the environment for your wireless network will be. And make sure that you're not using a channel or a set of frequencies that somebody else might be using that's right next door to you. By considering these environmental limitations, you can be assured that you'll have the efficiency and longevity for all of your network equipment.